Hi, welcome to The Art of Code. My name is Mark Time, and what you see behind me here is a Newton's Cradle that we made in the last video. If you haven't checked that out yet, be sure to do so. The link is in the description. And in this video, I thought we'd put some materials on this thing. So, if that interests you, stick around. So, if we go down here, let's go down to the main image, all the way at the end of the shader. Uh, so basically over here we're getting the camera pretty much, or the view ray, and then over here we're ray marching that ray, and then over here, um, if, if our distance that we get out of it, the distance to the scene, if it is less than some maximum distance, then we know that we, that we hit something in the scene, right? And so that's what we do inside of here. We kind of uh, formulate the material for for the object. Uh, it's just that over here we don't have access to individual parts, right? The like the best thing that we can do here is is uh, make a uh, change the color for the entire for the entire thing. And so in order to get access to individual parts of this, uh, we're going to have to make a function that takes as an input the 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 3D position of the hit. Right, which is over here, which is that this is the 3D position of the current pixel. And uh, as an output, we're going to have to say, okay, well, which object did we actually hit there? And so if we go up here, and let me just collapse the, the functions that we're not using here. So the get ray there, we're not working on, the get normal, we're not working on, the ray march, we're not working on. Uh, so here we have the get dist function, which takes as an input a 3D position. And as an output, it gives me the distance to the scene, right? The closest distance, or the distance to the closest surface. Um, so we need something very similar because this this already gets the, the distance to the base and the bar and the balls. It just it just returns me the minimum of those. Uh, but what I want is I want to know what the minimum was. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Okay, from here to here, Control C, and I'm going to Control V over here. And then now I'm going to call this, uh, not get dist, but get mat for get material. And the get material is going to return an index, right? Zero, one, two, three, whatever. Uh, and each index corresponds to a different material. And so that is an integer, an int. Um, and then inside of here, we're going to say, uh, we're going to say, okay, um, our material is zero, which means like no material. And then we're going to return that. And then, and then here we're going to have to figure out, okay, what is the object that we actually hit? And the way to do that is by just comparing the closest distance to all of the objects to uh, the distance to the individual parts. So what I could do here is I could say if D equals base, meaning if the closest distance of all distances is the base, well, then I hit the base. Right, so so here I can say mat equals, let's say one, and for the next one two and three and four. Um, it's just that uh, generally we don't want to use just numbers. It's better for us mere humans to not use numbers but use labels instead. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to define some labels. So I'm going to go all the way to the top here, and then here I'm going to say const for constant int mat base equals one. So that's just to make a label so we can use mat base instead of using the number one, which, because we're going to use it in multiple places, so it's much better to have a label as opposed to a number. Uh, and the const uh, stands for, for constant, and that just tells the compiler that the, the, that this, um, this variable is not going to change during the operation of the shader. Um, so we're going to have one for this and then a few other ones. So we're going to have one for the base, one for the bars, one for the ball, and one for the, the, the lines, right? The little filament line here that's holding up the balls. Uh, and then all of these obviously need to have a different ID. So three and four. And now uh, if I go back to the get mat function. So if the closest distance to everything it, it equals the distance to the base, well then return the, the base ID. And then else if the closest distance equals the distance to the bars, then 
return uh, the bars ID and then else if D equals balls then not equals not ball uh, all right and the line is a little bit different I'll get back to that in a minute um, so let's let's use this function okay so I'm gonna go uh, down here mm -mm -mm. so down here inside of where I actually uh, determine the color of the pixel and I'm gonna say int mat equals get mat and now I can just say if mat equals mat base, well then do something special for the base, right? So we could say, we could make it darker like this, for instance. And so now we have access, on, or we have control over just the base. Uh, and I see that the, uh, the bottom of the base, uh, it doesn't have the same, um, it doesn't have the same ID. So let's just fix that. And that is because, uh, so over here we get the base, and if you remember for the base we used a, a box, uh, a rounded box, and then we just, later on we cut, we cut the bottom half off of it, right? That's, that's what this does over here. Uh, but that bottom half gets cut off uh, after, um, uh, afterwards on, uh, on the entire uh, union of all of the objects. Um, so if, if I want the bottom to have the proper ID, then I also need to do that to the base as well. So let's just do that here. So base equals max of base and minus p dot y. And that should get rid of that for me. So now the entire base has that one, that one ID. Um, all right, so that was for the base. So let's do the same thing for the other parts. So I'm going to say else if mat equals mat bars uh, then we can say make the bars blue so I'm gonna multiply it by blue so that's 0 comma 0 comma 1 so that would make the bars blue and then let's make the balls red so else if mat equals mat ball then all times equals Vec3 and then the red. All right. Okay. Uh, now uh, there is a slight problem with that, um, which is that right now I can't dis distinguish between the balls and the and the filament here, and that is because if we go back up here, uh, the, both the ball and the line uh, come from this external function here, SD ball. And so in, inside, of, inside of the getMat function here, we don't even know uh, whether we hit the ball or the line. Uh, so we're going to have to change this function so the function, this function will tell us what we hit. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, so I'm going to go, and, and I can close this one for now. Um, and then over here, instead of just returning the distance, right, I'm just returning the distance, I'm going to return the distance and the material ID. So I'm going to make this into a vector 2. And then over here, I'm going to have to make that into a vector 2. And so then I have the distance, and here I'm going to have the material ID. And for the material ID, I need to know basically whether I hit the ball or I hit the line, right? And uh, so I'm going to have to shuffle this around a tiny little bit, uh, because over here I'm making the ball, right? So let's just call this ball instead of D. And then over here, let's just union those two right off the bat here. So I'm going to say uh, ball equals the min of ball and the ring. And so that just makes it that the ring is already baked into the ball. Uh, and then I can get rid of this part over here. And then over here, I can say float D equals just the min of the ball and the line. Okay. Uh, and now uh, over here, I can figure out, okay, if the minimum distance... Uh, to the ball and the line equals the, uh, is the same as the, the distance to the ball, well, then I've hit the ball. So then I could say mat ball. Otherwise, I hit the line, right? Hit the line. And this, by the way, if you've never seen this before, this is called a ternary operator. Um, and um, it's basically just an if statement on one line. So basically what this does is there's an expression here. Well, be before the question mark, there's an expression. And that expression can either be true or false, 
And if the expression is true, uh, the entire thing is going to return the first thing. And if the expression is false, the entire thing is going to return the second thing over here. So that's how that works. Uh, now, if I try to compile this, I'm going to get a bunch of errors. So let's see what those errors are. And they're actually, the first errors are going to be over here inside of the get this function. So this get this function over here, well, let's read what it says here. Dimension mismatch, um, cannot convert from high precision to component vector of float to a high precision float. Um, basically, it's just complaining, saying, hey, uh, you are trying to assign a vector two, because this thing right now returns a vector two, right? It doesn't return a float anymore. Uh, and you're trying to assign that to a float, so I don't know what to do with that. Uh, and so inside of the get this function, we're not interested in the material ID, so we can just do very simply dot x over here. Because if we say, so if this entire, because this entire thing evaluates to a vector 2, and then I, I can just say, okay, well, give me the x component of that vector 2, which is the distance over there. Okay, so if I do that, you know, dot x everywhere, dot x and dot x and dot x then I don't have those errors anymore. I still have a bunch of other errors because instead of the get mat function now, it's complaining about the same thing. Just that over here, we are interested in the, in the, um, in the material ID. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna define these B1, B2, B3, B4, B5 as a vector two and not as a float. So that's gonna get rid of those errors. And now it's going to give me an error over here because it's going to say, hey, uh, this min function expects two floating points uh, values, and, and right now it's getting two vectors, so that doesn't work. Uh, so we're going to have to make our own min function for this. So let's do that. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say vec2 min. And I, I use a capital over here because obviously I can't do this because this is a reserved uh, keyword. So I'm going to do it like that. And instead of two floats, it's going to take two vector twos, right? So vector two A and B. And now I'm going to return the one for which the X component is the smallest, right? So I can just go return. And I can use the same ternary operator for this. So I can say, I can make an expression, A dot X smaller than B dot X. If A dot X is smaller than B dot X, then return A, otherwise return B. All right, simple enough. So yeah, just to, just to really drive this home, this is this is the same as this, right? So a dot x smaller than b dot a dot x uh, return a else uh, like else return b, right? Well, anyway, you get the point. Um, so ternary operators are often uh, like nice to be very concise. Uh, okay, so now that that work that operates on vector twos. So now uh, I'm going to have to use that function, right? So I'm going to capitalize all the M's over here. Uh, and now that whole thing is going to return a vector 2. So I'm going to make this balls into a vector 2 as well. Okay. Um, and now if I try to compile it, this is going to have an issue over here. Because it's going to say, hey, uh, this doesn't work here. So over here, we're just getting the minimum distance. Uh, it has nothing to do with the with the material ID. So over here, I can just say dot x uh, to to keep to keep working with that. And maybe we don't even need that over here. Actually, I suppose maybe we don't need it. Anyways, we can figure it out in a minute. Um, okay. So and then over here also we have to compare with only the distance. And now after all of that, um, we over here. We can not return mad ball, but we can return balls dot y, which is the which is the material ID, which is either the ball or the line. Okay, so now if I do that, uh, it's still going to complain because this is a float. Now it's a floating point, and this is an integer. So I just have to cast it back to an integer. So I have to say int of that, and now we have full control over all the different parts of this shader. So that's pretty cool. So let me go over here and now I can say 
else if mat equals mat line, then pull times equals 0 0.05, let's say, to make it really dark. Okay. Uh, time for a cup of tea. Or for a sip of tea. <clears throat> okay, so let's try to put some materials on this thing. Uh, before I do that, let's first uh, make an environment here, uh, have something uh, in the surrounding area. Uh, for that, I'm just going to use a cube map. So uh, you can go over here to iChannel0, click on that and go to cube maps and then pick a cube map. I'm just going to pick this one, but you can pick any other one. It's up to you. And so a cube map is basically uh, like imagine you're sitting in a big in a big cube. And so there's the six cube faces, right? There's the front and there's the back behind you and left, right, and up and down. And, um, and we are going to uh, apply that onto the background. And the way we can do that is by uh, uh, using uh, this vector here, the ray direction. So, so normally, like a normal texture, you read that with a normal UV coordinate that goes between 0, 0, and 1, 1, right? So it, it, it picks up pixel from that texture, or it picks a texel based on, on, on two coordinates, right? An X and a Y. Uh, for a cube map, uh, we need a direction. And so basically what it's doing is like you pick a direction and wherever that direction vector shoots out of the box, it's going to hit one of the six faces at a particular location. And so uh, uh, it's going to pick that particular uh uh, texture that that corresponds with the with the face, and it's going to pick the particular pixel that corresponds with the exact intersection point. And um, that's a very long line of explanation for something that that is done automatically. So uh, luckily for us, so we can just say texture uh, i channel zero, and then throw our ray direction into that, and then that's going to give us back a, an RGB and an alpha value. Uh, in other words, it's going to give us back a vector 4, and we need a vector 3 over here. Uh, so we're just going to swizzle this to just give us the RGB, and not the RGB and A. Uh, and so that would give us a background. And so now we have a background on this thing, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and now what we would want to do is uh, create uh, some sort of metal uh, material that reflects this uh, and so for that I am going to go over here yes yeah, so over here like it was already in this template here um, so in order to calculate a reflection what you first have to do is you have to so, so so there's the there's the view array right that shoots out of your eye or that shoots out of the camera through the screen and into the scene and that view array might hit something let's say this ball over here and then, and then when it hits, we have to calculate, okay, well, how would that ray bounce off of this surface, right? Um, and so for that, uh, we need to normal up the surface, which is the vector pointing straight out of the surface. Um, and then we can calculate the reflection, which is, well, if it comes from here, it would, like, go in that direction. And uh, luckily, although it's not that hard to do it yourself, but uh, GLSL and uh, I would imagine all shading languages have a reflect function. And so here we just say reflect uh, this vector, which is the I vector, and uh, reflect it um, into a surface with a normal of N. Uh, and then I store that in this, uh, in this value R over here. And now we can use that to look up a pixel from the cube map. Uh, so we can say vec3 ref equals texture. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing as over here, right? So I could just copy this actually. Uh, go over here, and then, but instead of the ray direction, I'm going to take the reflected direction, right, over there. And so now that I have that reflection, I could add that to something. So let's say on the ball, instead of making them red, I could just say, well, give me the reflected value there. And that gives some really cool looking, reflective looking balls. How cool is that? Okay, so we could do that for the other things as well. 
Um, let me see, for the base, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make it darker, but still have the reflection. So that's just a reflection times some attenuating value. Okay, so there we have the base. And then uh, the bars, I'm gonna do them, I'm gonna do them the same as the balls, pretty much, I suppose. Okay, uh, so there you have it. Now, that looks pretty cool. Um, one issue with this is that the, um, this object right now is only reflecting the surroundings and not the object itself, right? You, you do not see the reflection of one ball in another ball. You do not see the reflection of, um, uh, of the balls in the base. And that is a little bit more complicated. Uh, I'm going to explain that in the next video. So if you don't want to miss that, please uh, uh, don't forget to like, to subscribe, click the little bell icon. And uh, I will see you.